lightning impact in today's lecture we will discuss what is social stratification concept of equality and inequality and we will discuss some types of society on the basis of this level and degree of inequality that is the egalitarian rank and stratified society so let's start okay first is that what is social stratification social stratification is a hierarchy of strata it's a, which is unequal in terms of property, power, and prestige. This is called a social stratification. It means that it is a kind of hierarchy. It is a kind of categorization. It is a system in which different order is uh, in which the individuals they have been divided in a form of a, in a form of order or top to down a kind of uh, layers which have been arranged. And it is strata which is. Uh, strata is a kind of set it is a kind of group or sphere or rank into which individuals are assigned so this hierarchy of strata it is it could be on the basis of property power or prestige when these resources like property power and prestige they are unevenly distributed in society this will lead to the social stratification this definition in which it was referring to the property power and prestige this definition was given by max weber okay as we discussed that social stratification is a kind of uh, is a kind of strata in which there is inequality in terms of property power and prestige so what does it mean by inequality like how can we define inequality uh, we will first discuss the concept of how the equality and inequality has been defined inequality refers to the degree to which individuals groups and categories they differ in their access to the cultural value rewards it means that up to which extent the all the assets like the property power and prestige or all the why these property power and prestige are considered most important assets because these are the things that are culturally value how are these rewards or how are these benefits they are evenly distributed in society this uh, up okay so inequality refers to the extent up to which the individuals groups and categories they differ in their access to the culturally value rewards this is inequality okay so then we will we can classify that there are three main reward categories that are the wealth power and prestige first is the wealth wealth is considered the most tangible uh, most tangible asset which is maybe in the form of the material goods or may have any access to resources and wealth is uh, in the pre-industrial society there was a uh, consumables which people value because at that time there was no concept of money economy but at that time they were uh, they were using they were valuing the consumables like shelter and beers and resources that can produce these consumables but in nowadays society wealth is considered most important wealth can be can use synonymous to the property it means that the individual must have a kind of ownership or position of something which they can use for their benefits okay then the second is power power is the ability of individual to make other people follow them to make other people to follow their orders either it's by coercion or it's uh, through the legitimate power or legitimate authority it means that power can be legitimate or illegitimate but as uh, mostly we think that those who have more power they have mostly uh, those who have more wealth they are mostly more powerful but it's not always the case for example in case of the societies where there are some traditional authority which they value for example those people who value the society when they value the religious leaders the charismatic leaders or they value a kind of traditions like black magic so those individuals who have the knowledge of that uh, culturally value rewards they will have more power in that society even if they have minimum wealth so power is also considered one of the most important category uh, up in, uh, on the basis of which the social stratification is uh, usually considered. Okay, and the third is prestige. What is prestige? Prestige is the admiration, the respect, the overt agreement towards individuals, and what kind of um, respect and it has been entitled with individual it depends on a kind of society the perception of society how the judgment of society that how people they judge the other individuals and it might be possibility that one individual who is admired in one society may look down in other society for example the u.s societies they value the self-made persons but in other society such person can be viewed as a self-centered as a selfish person 
so there is a difference in a judgment and a perception of individuals which affect the this uh, prestige which is considered one of the most important category so these are three important reward categories on the basis of which the society has been classified okay then there are three systems Morton Fried identified three systems in 1967 based on the level and kind of inequality. What kind of inequality exists in our society? And what is the level of that inequality? Morton Fry considered these two factors and they classify uh, the world societies into three major systems. And that is the egalitarian society, rank society and stratified society. Now, what is egalitarian society? Before we look into the egalitarian society, we have to look into the Fried's classification. That what are the major principles or what are the uh, important uh, assumptions he had made for this classification? Fried clarified four points about his classification. He said that these categories don't refer to access to rewards based on gender or age. It means that those societies who have been classified as egalitarian means that they have equal status or where there is a rough equality. There might be a possibility that there was a discrimination on the basis of gender or age. Gender discrimination and, um, and ageism, which is discrimination on the basis of age, or we can say that the stratification on the basis of gender, gender stratification on the, on the basis of age, these uh, factors has been excluded uh, when Freud classified the world societies in, into the, uh, these three categories, mean that he didn't consider these two factors. So when, when we uh, discuss these three societies, we will uh, we need to keep in mind that gender or age, they, these two factors have been excluded. And the second thing is that th these categories, they are mainly point along a continent of inequality. It means that Freud actually gave a kind of range on which on one extreme there is a society which is at perfect equality which is egalitarian and on other extreme there is a society that is stratified and in between them there is a rank society but these are just a descriptions the mere descriptions of society which according to Freud that they move from egalitarian to stratified there might be a possibility that there is some society that exists in between the rank and the egalitarian or in between the rank and the uh, stratified society so we cannot use you, you know we cannot use uh, any kind of point that at this point there was society which was perfectly egalitarian or which was perfectly ranked the, the societies they were mostly as we discuss as we know that societies are dynamic so they will a society is mostly again the characteristics of different um, other cultures so we can say that these categories cannot be used as a fix uh, fixed reference or it cannot be used something to determine that at this point this that society exists it is like we used that that society was nearly egalitarian there was rough equality there is it this is not a kind of perfect scale and third is that egalitarian rank and stratifies the temporal order in which these three forms develop means that we can refer to time in history in which these three societies develop um, egalitarian society it arise uh, it was about 10,000 years ago egalitarian society exist and then after a few thousand years later rank society emerged and then the stratified society and then 4,000 to 5,000 years or the next 4,000 and 5,000 years stratified society spread throughout much of the world and now is the age where the egalitarian societies are few and most of the societies are stratified so these are the three, uh, three types of societies which um, arise one after another in the temporal order in history then Freud classify uh, Freud before he give this classification he clarified two bases for equality and inequality he said that what we call equality in egalitarian rank and stratified society and what we call it inequality these are on the basis it has two major bases that why equality and inequality arise in these societies first is that people value such life when people they value equality in society their society in which majority of people agree that there should have even uh, even distribution of resources their societies were mostly those where there was you know, a rough equality and there was also some societies where there was uh, such ideologies developed which justify the inequality for example if we take the uh, caste system which prevail in society in ancient societies mostly 
and in their societies there was a concept ideologies like this is something which has been ordained by god so the, the inequality was considered that it is something inherent in a system it is something by uh, designed by god so that's why people do not strive for change so equality and inequality exist in society depend on the people desire and the second reason which he gave that it was also the regular outcome of how system work like it is not necessary that people desire for equality it might be that it it uh, equality is generated regardless of what people desire for uh, how the social system work it can also lead to equality and inequality for example the capitalist system as the capitalist system is uh, enhancing the inequality between the have and have not class even if people desire for equality while living under the capitalist system their uh, struggle will get in vain because uh, it is the social structure which is leading to the inequality so he clarified two major points for this that equality and inequality may exist in society it may be that people value such life or it may be that it is the regular outcome of how system work okay so these were the four points which was necessary to understand the friars classification before we discuss that now we will discuss that what is egalitarian society egalitarian society is a form of society in which there is little inequality in access to the culturally value rewards what was the culturally what was the culturally value reward these were the three main which we discussed that was the wealth power and prestige now it is a form of society in which there is little inequality means that there was rough equality in access to a culturally value rewards egalitarianism mostly means that it, in this the individuals they have mostly equal status what are the major characteristics of this society there was rough equality between families in access to necessities there was a concept of positions and the wealth of jar but their their main principle which leads to the egalitarian society was their a uh, principle of reciprocal sharing that there was a wide access to and sharing of productive resources and there was also influence and prestige based on age and a personal qualities and achievements as we discussed that this society was classified as egalitarian because there was no other stratification except on the basis of age on the basis of gender and some on the basis of personal qualities uh, and and as we discussed that fries actually exclude these two categories uh, when he discussed uh, these three types of society he didn't uh, consider age and gender so in egalitarian society there was stratification on the basis of age there was stratification on the basis of gender and the personal qualities and achievements were value in that society okay then example of egalitarian is the anuit hadza bamtuti they are examples of egalitarian society now James would one give some views about how these societies were egalitarian he say that these are there are some uh, characteristics which uh, which was unique to the egalitarian society and that's why the society remained egalitarian for decades and what was the reason for that first is the mobility that these societies were mostly mobile they moved from one place to another so of course the accumulation of wealth was not possible when society was mobile they when people they they need to move from one place to another maybe that they were they were in search of rich environment or maybe because of the harsh season the seasonal extremes so in that case they move from one place to another and this mobility actually overcome the chances of accumulating wealth of position as positions and uh, like at that time the wealth was in the form of property so of course egalitarian society does not believe in position of property because uh, the, it was a mobile society so they get it was Uh, obviously impossible for them to uh, move property along them from one place to another and then the reciprocal sharing in that society even if a if one family they they do uh, more work and and what time for example if they gather more fruits um if they hunt more animals so their belief was reciprocal sharing they shared their extra meal with others and in same uh, in return the other family at the day when they were doing more they actually they were also using the same principle and uh, they were sharing the extra meat with others so in that case there was no concept of ownership or the surplus there was no concept of surplus because the what uh, they have in extra they were always uh, sharing with others so this was the reciprocal sharing which actually made the society egalitarian and the third was that there was a diverse options available 
as this society was mobile so if any society where they live if any family they try to dominate another they these people they move from one place to another because they were nomadic people so they if they are disagree with the environment or with the uh, you know the that one family they try to dominate the other they just try to move uh, to another place so the availability of the diverse options also make the society egalitarian this was the view which was given by the james Hopper. okay then what is the rank society rank society is a society with a limited number of high ranking privileged social positions groups and ranks relative to one another in egalitarian society there was no, uh, there was equal status it was a uh, society which was on the basis of equal status but the rank society in that case there was a concept of ranking Im arise and but this ranking this was a limited number and there was a privileged social positions groups are ranked relative to one another okay a rank society is considered as an immediate phase between the egalitarian society and the stratified society it is considered as an intermediate society in between them it was neither egalitarian nor as unequal as it is as the stratified society is okay what are the characteristics of this is a limited number of former social roles or positions like there was offices titles that confer some authority and how this what was actually the social positions it was the position which was acquired by the leaders because the concept of the leadership emerged in case of the rank society because in rank society there was a concept of kinship which is something that um, you know the set of families they try to move uh, they try to segregate themselves from the other on the basis of their clan on the basis of their lineage so the set of families they try to form a kind of society for themselves and the other set of family they try to make society for themselves in that way there was a kind of leaders who was leading their own clans their own uh, their own kings so in that case the rank society emerged access to the prestigious titles and offices determined largely by hereditary and those who were leaders they also passed this title to their next generation there was a concept of family and kinship ties and rights to resources allocated by those of the higher rank those who are at higher rank they were also they were actually dictating that the access to the resources examples of the rank society is the tikopia which is a considered excellent example of the rank society Raymond Fitz gives some characteristics of Tikopia because he studied this society and he gives some characteristic that it is how the three characteristic which was described in the egalitarian societies uh, like the that it was on the basis of the reciprocal sharing it was on the basis of mobility and uh, such characteristics were absent in a rank societies there was a concept of patrilinear society means that they were tracing a kind of their ancestry so at in egalitarian all were living as they are a part of single family but in case of the rank society when it become patrilinear they try to trace their uh, their ancestors and in on the basis of their ancestry they actually form a kind of different uh, groups of families that was that is known as the family or you know the kin groups then the sedentary Tikopia is considered one of the society that was relatively sedentary to the egalitarian society. The, all the societies that were the mobile, that were uh, nomadic, their societies are considered egalitarian. But those who are relatively sedentary, they are classified as rank societies. Okay, then status. There was a status, um, the concept of status arise because there was a concept of leadership which is a political dimension arise which leads to the high and lower status and there was also the food availability as there was a property rights emerge so of course the people as if they were sedentary so they try to own the property and on that property they grow the crops so there was more food availability in for that purpose they don't need to move from one place to another so it actually leads to the absence of the diverse options which was available to the egalitarian society and there was a concept of the political dimension arise which leads to the concept of leadership and as the leadership concept arises it leads to the high and lower status and in that way this egalitarian society become rank society 
Okay, then the third is the stratified society. Society with marked and variably heritable differences in access to wealth, power, and prestige. Inequality is based mainly on unequal access to productive and value resources. Stratified society is a society which is, uh, which, on in which the levels of inequality is at peak. It is a, it is a society where there is a huge inequality as compared to the egalitarian and ranked society. There is uneven distribution in access to wealth, power and prestige. Inequality based on unequal access to productive and the value resources. Okay, so what are the characteristics of the stratified society? The sharply unequal distribution of material resources and wealth, large inequalities in access to power and the social rewards. So, so the society in which we are living today is a stratified society. It even there is a global stratification that there are the societies that are the most industrialized nations, then the industrializing, and then the least industrialized. So this even the so the stratification has been arise within the nations, not just in the society, within the society, but it is also among the nation they have been stratified. So there is also a concept of global stratification that has been emerged. And in case of the stratification society, there is a huge and sharp inequality. So what is a social stratum? It consists of families who have roughly the same access to rewards. When we say that there is a social stratification, the you know the stratified society is emerged. So what does it mean by stratum, which is uh, singular to the strata? So stratum is a category in which the people they have been assigned to a particular category, uh, or we can say a set or rank or a sphere or group. So these all individuals who are part of the similar stratum they have same access to the rewards. Okay, so stratified societies and the cultural beliefs. Stratified society depends on the cultural beliefs of the country. For example, in North America, Europe, and New Zealand, and other developing countries, uh, sorry, developed countries, the social mobility is possible through education, special skills, hard work, and good luck because there is a, within the social stratum, uh, within the uh, social stratification, there is a concept of social mobility that people can move up and down within the uh, uh, social stratification within the stratum but how can they move from one place to one stratum to another it depends on the cultural beliefs of the society in which individual live that what kind of the cultural rewards cultural value rewards are there so in case of the uh, those societies that are most developed they value the special skills education hard work but in some societies like india they they value education performance give it more priority and the parent they expand enormous resources in schooling even improves preschools but in case of the other like Europe New Zealand there is also a concept of special skills the vocational courses which can lead to the uh, social mobility okay then industrialized industrial nation uh, revolution and the change in cultural beliefs how industrial revolution change these cultural beliefs which in turn change the social stratification so in a pre-industrial europe and the traditional india the one's position was considered fixed because there was a, a such ideologies that was prevailing that it is something that was that has been ordained by god that is something by birth so in traditional india and also in a pre-industrial europe there was a concept that one's position it is fixed by birth and then beliefs like inequality is hereditary or it is ordained by the supernatural being such ideolo ideologies were actually helping to maintain that kind of fixed social stratification in their societies okay so in nowadays society we see that there are two types of strata that is the class system and the caste system the class system and caste system i have made lecture on the differences between class and caste if you haven't visited that lecture you can you can visit that lecture to understand the uh, detailed differences of these two but just for an overview the class system is a system which is mostly determined by the economic different uh, economic distinction between individuals which is the because of the economic position of an individual someone belongs to the upper middle and lower class depends on the uh, you know the economic position of them and caste system is something which has been ascribed which is de which is determined by birth at the time of birth that in which caste individual has been born but in case of the Indian society the caste system has been um, it has been classify on the basis of occupation like there is a particular occupation which has been defined for particular caste like for Brahmins uh, there is a most uh, demanding and the they are 
uh, those professions that are mostly considered more paying that is for the brahmans and for those which is the least paying jobs uh, that was uh, that is that has been defined for the dalits so the caste system in india and the class system these are the examples of the social stratification there are also other examples of stratification like gender stratification we can take examples of slavery that is also the example of stratification and also the other but the class and caste are considered one of two of the most important uh, types of the uh, social stratification that exist in our society so this was all about the social stratification um, that how the there were three types of societies egalitarian rank and stratified societies how it moved from one to another and how industrial revolution then brought change in this culture beliefs and so this was all about the this was all about the social stratification and the types of society so this was the end of our lecture thank you so much for watching leave your questions in the comment section below and like share and subscribe our channel for latest lectures thank you